EFCO brings you EFCO Deck. The system is a handset shoring and reshoring system for elevated concrete slab construction. It is an excellent product for floor to ceiling heights of 7 to 15 feet and slabs up to 12 inches thick and can deliver wider than normal shore post spacing. The EFCO Deck system complements EFCO's Easy Deck system and Adjusted Deck system. EFCO's Easy Deck system is used primarily for the higher floor to ceiling heights, thicker slabs, and most important, assembling the system on the ground and assembled movements between pours. The best applications for EFCO's Adjusted Deck system are when the columns and walls of a building are located and available to support the concrete forming platform. The system is also valuable where repetitive large decks are to be formed, where crane time is available, and when large deck panels can be handled outside the building without interfering with the adjacent structures, traffic, and ground traffic patterns. EFCO is dedicated to providing you the best value and lowest in-place concrete costs. With over 72 years of innovations and inventions for concrete forming systems, EFCO has done it again with EFCO Deck. And now, EFCO's series of training videos will provide you with detailed demonstrations of the best methods for assembling and cycling your EFCO Deck system. This step-by-step -step video will focus on reducing labor costs and increase safety on your project again providing you with the best value and lowest in-place concrete costs on your shoring and decking project. EFCO Deck has just a few parts which can be quickly assembled to construct high production shoring and decking. This system can be used with Easy Deck when a project requires a floor height over 15 feet. Aluminum primary beams, along with high-strength galvanized steel posts and secondary beams, result in lightweight, long-lasting equipment. This system is versatile, easy to assemble, and quick to cycle. EFCO Deck does not require cranes or fork trucks to assemble or strip the equipment. A crane or material hoist is needed to move racks of posts and beams from floor to floor. Cranes for conventional flying truss systems are generally much larger and more expensive. The versatility of the EFCO deck also makes it easy to form variations and complex floor layouts with ease. Sometimes adjoining structures and ground level traffic patterns also can limit the movement of large flying deck systems. The EFCO deck shoring posts can also be used as a reshore, which can reduce reshore labor. The forming and shoring engineering specialists at EFCO, along with EFCO field representatives dedicated to project productivity, have developed a step-by-step -step process for the EFCO deck system's assembly and cycling procedures. These procedures will deliver the benefits of the system and give you the opportunity to operate in less time and with less effort. This will help you maintain your production schedules, saving you money, while the assembly requirements of your project may differ from the examples used here, at EFCO, we keep safety and productivity in mind as our engineers and field service representatives help you design the best assembly method for your project. This step-by-step -step presentation will feature initial installation and cycling procedures for the EFCO deck. Planning the work and working the plan is the key to success. Good engineering support for your project is, of course, a requirement. When presented with clear analysis and specifications, our engineers can help your team to set up leg spacing, lateral bracing, and specifications for the project. EFCO's field service support and engineering guidance will assist you in selecting the best methods for the safest and most efficient assembly and cycling of your forming system. As with all forming and shoring equipment, safety is everybody's job. You must observe and follow all safety guidelines and applicable codes at all times. Determining concrete strength is critical prior to stripping the formwork and then also prior to loading the slab with shoring and formwork to support the next slab above. The EFCO deck system permits early removal of forming materials while shore posts remain in place. It is the contractor's responsibility, relying on job site engineering personnel, 
to assure that the concrete strength is sufficient to resist forces at all steps in the forming process. This includes supports under the slab shoring system, as well as the reshoring of previously poured slabs. Those things we focus on, we are successful at, and those things we ignore, we can fail. Think safety and work safely. The EFCO deck system has just a few major elements. There are three sizes of telescoping steel posts, L1, L2, and L3, which have the flexibility to accommodate various floor heights in a project from 76 to 180 inches. Using the patent applied for load release pin gives a quick load release of the shore post. The pin, along with the sleeve nut adjustment, will allow overlap between the different post lengths. EFCO deck is a system that allows you to assemble your shoring with a post spacing of up to 6 feet by 8 feet. A good reference for the heart of the system components is EFCO's catalog EFC1015. The 8-foot secondary beam span is an excellent advantage compared to some other systems. When it comes to moving carts of shoring equipment around on the port deck, the extra room makes it easier. The wider post spacing also means fewer posts and pieces to cycle from pour to pour. Load capacity will depend on the height and post spacing. The load release pin drops the post down one-fourth of an inch to allow easier stripping relief in the system. The drop head provides complete stability of the shore post during stripping of the primary and secondary beams and lowers quickly for smooth removal of the formwork. Lightweight aluminum primary beams are designed for easy, safe, and fast handling. The primary beams come in two lengths, 4 foot and 6 foot. There's also a 10 foot primary beam that can only be used in a cantilevered configuration and is used properly for exterior cantilevers to support working platforms. Only one end connects directly to a drop head, and a second shore must be positioned midway to carry the beam. To use the 10-foot primary beams, you must follow the project shoring erection drawings and your own project engineer's inspections and instructions. Lightweight galvanized steel secondary beams have an embedded plastic nailing strip that will not shrink, crack, or splinter over time, which can be used to fasten plywood to the beams. The secondary beams come in 4-foot, 6-foot, and 8-foot lengths. Again, the components of the EFCO deck system can be easily recognized and specified using EFCO's catalog number EFC1015, including capacities and weights. A U-head bracket is available and can be attached to the top of the EFCO deck post. This can be used to provide support for a single or a pair of EFCO Z-beams extra strength stringers if needed for special applications. This may be done to integrate with the Easy Deck system or to support greater loads. The tripod can be very helpful to offer support to the post in the initial setup of EFCO Deck. Many contractors have found that an EFCO Easy Deck shoring module with its aluminum stabilizing panels can be used to supply the required horizontal bracing of EFCO deck. This may eliminate the need to tie into existing concrete columns and walls for lateral bracing during both the setting and pouring process, and in addition, eliminate the tripods. Adequate horizontal bracing of all shoring systems is an absolute safety requirement. Work with your own project engineer, EFCO's engineer, and EFCO's field supervisor to help determine your best setup. Safety comes first. Using EFCO's Easy Deck modules at the perimeter of a structure can give an easy way to provide a cantilevered work platform. Most times, these modules are moved floor to floor fully assembled. The 2x4 clamps can be used to stabilize the EFCO Deck shoring system by using a 2x4 stud brace. The notches on the clamps indicate which diameter post size they can be used with. Posts, primary beams, and secondary beams are shipped in racks, 
These racks are then used to easily transfer stacked equipment from one shoring area and or floor to floor. There are both long and short racks. The accessory bins are the same overall size as the short racks and can be stacked with short racks and are used to hold loose shoring system components. Both racks and bins can be stacked too high for transferring floor to floor and a maximum of six high for storage. When multiple racks and bins are stacked, of course, they require a level concrete slab base. The rigid wheel and the swivel wheel attach to the bottom of the storage racks and the accessory bin to provide easy movement. When using the wheels, limit stacking to two bins or two baskets high. Being organized goes a long way toward improved productivity. Take an assembly line approach to working with the equipment. EFCO plans full truckloads of EFCO deck components with the load of equipment shipped in a ratio of legs and beams balanced. This is done so that as a truckload arrives, equipment can be unloaded and erected. EFCO's bill of lading for each shipment using its pick pictures can be a valuable tool to help job site personnel identify each piece of equipment. Initial installation. Step 1. Setting post length. Preset your post length as shown on the EFCO erection drawings. Use the top of two corner posts of a rack along with two EFCO gold forks to hold a post for the presetting to length operation. First, place the load release pin in the right hole to adjust the length of the post to within three inches of its required length. Fully insert the load release pin to put the post in the extended position. Then insert the linch pin in the inner hole of the load release pin. Second, fine tune the post to length with the sleeve nut adjustment on the shoring post. Fine tuning will save time later. Step 2, Option 1, setting up the first post using tripods for stability. Determine the most advantageous location to start the erection of EFCO deck equipment. This is usually in a corner or along two intersecting walls for lateral support. Chalk only a single straight line to set the center line of the first row of EFCO deck. Chalk only one X-axis and one Y-axis and the EFCO deck system will take care of the rest. Set up your first post by using the EFCO deck tripod for stability. Unfold the tripod and evenly space out the legs. Hook the post with the tripod and secure by tightening the wing nut. Step 2, Option 2, Setting up a module of Easy Deck. An alternate method of starting an EFCO deck setup is to start out with a more stable first module of Easy Deck. This single four post setup with Easy Deck panels will give a firm, stable pillar of strength for lateral bracing both during the setting up of EFCO deck and during the pouring operation. Easy deck and EFCO deck are designed to work together. Once the Easy deck module is set, you can tie on in all four directions with EFCO deck primary beams and secondary beams. Most times, EFCO deck users will strip out the handset EFCO deck a piece at a time. When it is time to move the Easy Deck stabilization module as a full setup, move it assembled from floor to floor. Step 3. Hang a primary beam. At this point, we should have a corner post either stabilized with a tripod or an Easy Deck module with an Easy Shore post. Hang a primary beam from the drop head. Step 4. Adding a second post. Using a second post, Hook the free sloping end of the primary beam with the drop head of the second post and push up until the primary beam is level and the post is vertical. Stabilize the second post with another tripod. Step 5. Second set of posts. Repeat steps 3 and 4 for another set of posts separated by your secondary beam spacing. Step 6. Adding secondary beams. The next step can best be handled by a readily available rolling scaffold supplied by others. From the rolling scaffold, 
Lay in secondary beams and space each to match the 4x8 plywood sheet layout. Step 7. Continue setup. Continue working from your four-post startup tower by hanging primary beams, pushing up with posts, and then dropping in secondary beams between the primary beams. Step 8. Stabilizing edges. Stabilize all free edges of the EFCO deck shoring by installing X-bracing, handrails, and tie-down brackets before allowing individuals up on top of the shoring for plywood installation. Again, follow all safety guidelines and applicable codes at all times. Step 9. Lateral Bracing Requirement Appropriate and adequate lateral bracing for an EFCO deck setup is an absolute requirement for safety. A qualified customer job site engineer must check each total setup for lateral stability. Many times the in-place concrete columns and shear walls provide this lateral bracing as long as the setup is caught between or attached to the permanent concrete part of the structure. Without the building structure's vertical concrete for stability, Easy Deck Towers can provide the lateral bracing. The diagonal 2x4 added bracing to the posts is another way to provide lateral bracing. Step 10. Drilling a plywood deck for penetrations. There are only a few times when penetrations are required through the plywood deck. As an example, when a pipe must be poured in place in the concrete without a sleeve forming a hole, or without drilling a hole in the slab after the slab has been poured. As a warning, a penetration drilled through the plywood after the shoring setup is in place must not touch or penetrate the EFCO deck shore head, primary beam, or secondary beam. Failing to follow this warning, drilling through the primary and or secondary beams could cause a shoring failure of the member and also the destruction and replacement of the shoring support beams. The EFCO deck system using a plywood deck makes it easy to complete the plywood closure around concrete columns and along walls. A concrete column can fall anywhere on the grid of primary aluminum beams in one direction and secondary lightweight steel beams in the other direction. Because plywood will normally cantilever five inches beyond a supporting member, this many times will handle closures up to walls. If the center line of a post falls more than seven inches away from a column or wall, the EFCO system uses the drawer effect to move standard primary beams in to meet the existing concrete column. With the EFCO deck system, you can place primary beams on both sides of a column and use a standard 2x4 or 4x4 wood beam to span between them. This way, the primary beam will fit up snug against the column and the wood will easily support the plywood deck. See your EFCO erection drawings for more details. Cycling Equipment Step 1. Relieving the Load Relieve the load in the framing members, primary and secondary beams by hitting the drop head load relief nut ear. This causes the primary and secondary beams to drop 4 inches. Step 2. Strip relieved equipment. With the drop head relieved, primary and secondary beams, along with loose plywood, can be stripped. Stack neatly and fill the carts and roll to the next pour. Warning. You may want to stack the racks two racks high for moving equipment floor to floor. For ease in handling, it is best to put the heavier post item in the lower bin of two and the primary and secondary beams in the upper rack. All materials moved with a crane from floor to floor must be securely strapped to the rack for the move. Left behind are only posts with drop heads and plywood trapped by the posts. These will remain until sufficient strength is reached by the slab to support its own weight. Step 3. Removing posts and installing reshores. Once the slab has reached sufficient strength to support its own weight, move the hitch pin from the inner hole to the outer hole on the load release pin. Relieve the heaviest load on the post by tapping the load release pin to its secondary position. Any lesser remaining load on the shore post 
can be loosened by turning the load release barrel nut at working height. The handle of the load release nut has been designed so that a straight claw hammer can be easily engaged in the handle to rotate the nut. Note how the base plate end of each post has been designed to provide neat, easy and orderly stacking of posts in the carts. Because reshoring depends on the early strength of concrete, a specialist employed by the contractor must evaluate the strength of concrete and the reshore system before removing shores and placing concrete above. The specialist shall determine the levels of shoring and reshoring to safely support the fresh concrete. And the specialist shall determine the age of the concrete when stripping and reshore operations may proceed. Once all the posts are relieved of load and removed and the slab is allowed to deflect, reshore posts can be installed. To prevent reshores from falling over, install a reshore spring on the top of each reshore post before reinstalling the post. This is to keep the post from falling during the post tensioning of the slab above. As each reshore post is installed, adjust the shoring screw to flatten the reshore spring on the slab above. Do not tighten the post beyond flattening the spring, as this may cause loads to shift between reshored slabs. The reshore springs have a special design to clip on top of a shore. If you have used nails to attach the plywood to secondary beams, the secondary beams may need to be pried off the plywood after the drop head is relieved. It is recommended to use a maximum of six nails per sheet of plywood, unless you have a good reason to do otherwise, and only nailed to secondary beams. Many times there is a requirement to cantilever out beyond a last post to support a working platform. This is handled with a special one-ended primary aluminum beam approximately 10 feet long. This special cantilever beam is normally used with 6 foot 0 inch post spacing that limits the amount of cantilever to 3 foot 6 inches from post or 2 foot 6 inches from slab edge. In addition to adding the 10 foot primary beam, there are several additional accessories that may be required. And they are the cantilever beam bracket, tie down bracket, hold down clip, handrail post, T-bolt, and ratchet straps supplied by the contractor. A cantilever beam bracket is used when the post needs to be attached along the primary beam. The tie-down bracket slides on and is tightened to the primary beam. A strap connects this to a floor anchor in order to prevent toppling of the cantilevered primary beam. This system may be used for wind resistance on high floors. The hold-down clip slides and tightens on the primary beam to clip the drop head. It is used in all cantilever situations in order to prevent toppling of the cantilevered primary beam. Handrail posts along with 2x4s are attached to the edges of the system to create a safe working area on top of the shoring. have a new employee or even a new crew? This need not be a problem with EFCO Deck because EFCO supplies coordinated support including this step-by-step -step training video, product catalog, EFCO erection drawings, and job site field service. This is all part of EFCO's wraparound support. EFCO provides you with a support team ready to service your project. The members of your EFCO team for your project are the district engineer to assist with engineering questions, the plant manager for questions regarding shipments and returns of equipment, and the EFCO field service representative for all on-site planning, form erection, and cycling support. In addition, EFCO has the district sales administrator for coordination of the team and possible billing questions. We are also available to help you on your next project. For more information regarding the EFCO deck system and other EFCO forming systems, contact your territory manager at 1-888-BY-EFCO or on our website at efcoforms.com.